Hi, I'm Dr. Emilia Prakoso and this is Associate Professor Warwick Selby. Hello. We are from the A.W. Morrow Gastroenterology and Liver Centre at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, Sydney, Australia. We are two of the authors of the paper entitled Capsule Endoscopy versus PET scan for detection of small bowel metastatic melanoma, a pilot study published in GI Endoscopy. This study was devised by Professor Selby. Warwick, can you please provide some background of the study? Um, why did you feel a need for the study and what inspired you? Australia has the highest incidence of melanoma in the world. We know that the small bowel is a common site for melanoma to metastasize to. We've previously described a number of patients with small bowel melanoma detected on capsule endoscopy, but only one of those patients had had a PET scan beforehand. Since then, I've been referred a number of patients uh, who've had an abnormal PET scan with increased uptake in the abdomen, suggestive of possible involvement of the small bowel. However, it became apparent to me that uh, PET scanning wasn't a very reliable way for detecting small bowel uh, involvement with melanoma. And hence, I felt that the two techniques needed to be formally compared, and therefore uh, we devised this study. So perhaps you'd like to tell us uh, what you did. This was a, a prospective study. Um, it was conducted in collaboration with our pet and nuclear medicine department headed by Professor Michael Fulham and one of the largest melanoma centres in the world, Melanoma Institute Australia, headed by Professor John Thompson. We had 21 patients with metastatic melanoma undergoing FDG PET CT scanning for staging of their metastatic um, disease. We knew that this group would have a high likelihood of finding small bowel melanoma in addition to disease elsewhere. And what did you find? Overall, the capsule endoscopy found small bowel involvement in six of the 21 patients. It is interesting that, um, probably contrary to the expectation, the small bowel lesions we saw on capsule endoscopy were predominantly non-pigmented, but we have previously described this as well. It is important to note that although capsule endoscopy was better than the PET scan in detecting and localizing the small bowel melanoma, neither of the tests actually detected small bowel melanoma with 100% sensitivity even in this small study. PET scan missed one bleeding small bowel tumor seen on capsule endoscopy. There was also one patient with positive PET scan and negative capsule endoscopy who developed small bowel obstruction 10 months later and at surgery, small bowel melanoma was found as the cause. We cannot um, exclude that the capsule missed the small bowel um, secondary that was probably already present before. And what do you think the limitations are to this study? Well, at the moment, um, there is no gold standard for the final diagnosis. There are also a small number of patients who fitted the inclusion um, criteria and they all had known or likely to have extensive metastatic melanoma. Even so, we believe that the findings still apply to all patients with small bowel melanoma. And what do you think the findings of our study add to the knowledge of small bowel melanoma? Well, um, the FDG PET CT scan is currently regarded as the standard and most useful investigation modality for staging metastatic melanoma. This study, however, clearly shows that um, other modality um, should be added to the investigation um, algorithm in these patients. For assessment of small bowel disease, we believe PET scan and capsule endoscopy are complementary whether or not patients have GI symptoms and or anemia. What do you think should come next? Well, we've, we've studied a group of patients where the likelihood of small bowel involvement is high. I think what we need to know is just how common small bowel involvement is in melanoma and particularly whether early diagnosis and treatment is going to lead to improved outcomes. We hope you enjoy reading our paper.